Okay, and we are going to get underway. Um, this one should be closer to the 20 minutes that I try to keep us at. Um, so we're going to get underway. Uh, so tonight is about messaging and how you know that you are um, hitting on the right issues for your campaign and that your messaging is getting across what you want it to get across. And we're going to be looking at um, different ways that you can you can get that information, whether that's test door knocking, whether it's polling, surveying, focus groups. Um, so we're going to go through a couple different methodologies there and what the benefits are and what the costs are and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to get underway on this. Um, the very first thing that a candidate needs to decide when you're looking at what issues um, or what messaging or that kind of thing is to look at are you going to run your campaign on issues that you care about and you're passionate about or are you going to run on issues that your voters are passionate about or care about or have concern over. Um, if you are running your campaign and it's an issue-based campaign, meaning you're not running it to win, you're running it to raise awareness on a very specific issue. You're going to pick the issue that you are passionate about. However, you're still going to want to test your messaging. So the steps that I'm going through are still going to apply to what you want to have happen and, and you know the, the good things that you want um, to have happen to get your message across. If you are looking at being competitive or winning your campaign, you're going to want to run on the issues the voters care about. But you're going to come up with your solutions, your way of looking at this challenge, a libertarian way of solving this issue. And then you're going to test that issue and your messaging to see are you getting across um, what you need to get across to in a way that voters can understand and don't have unconscious bias against and those types of things. It doesn't mean that you're pandering. It doesn't mean that you're softening your message. It doesn't mean any of those things. We're talking about effective communication and ways to make sure that you are communicating effectively. So I'm going to go through a couple terms first of all and then we're going to come back to um, how you layer this on. So the first one is a test and knock. This is the least expensive, but probably the most personally time intensive for a candidate. What a test knock does is you um, randomly s select patches of your geographical territory, and you're trying to get a mix of neighborhoods and you know whether that's wealth or you know other demographics, age groups, all that kind of stuff. But you're going to do random little patches. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, knock on the door and you're not there to persuade. You're not there to do anything other than to gather information, whether that is what issue is top of mind to them or if your solution resonates with them. That's what you're looking to do. So test knock, door knocking. Um, it usually takes about two weeks to do a decent test knock to get enough people to answer the door to, to really get that feedback and that information back to you. Next one is polling. People use polling to mean a couple different things, but we're going to narrow it down to like the definition of what a poll is. It can be done online, it can be done through text, it can be done through a phone call, doesn't matter. What polling is, it's very structured, very formal, extremely short and it usually provides a percentage result. What percentage of voters care about issue X? Right? What percentage of voters would vote against issue X? Um, you get a qualit quantitative result from it. Okay? It's going to give you like a baseline. It's going to give you a snapshot. Polling is really quick though. You get the responses back really quick and you can look at the information. Uh, it gives you immediate feedback generally on one, maybe two or three, but generally one question. Like it's just razor focused in there. 
at its worst when it's done poorly. Polling is considered push polling and people generally have a negative reaction to it and it's it's a misleading way of getting information. You're not going to get true information back. Push polling is about trying to create a perception, not about finding out. A survey, on the other hand, is more detailed. It's asking for personal comments and views, and it's most likely directed to a specific group of persons. Okay, so what's the difference between a poll and a survey? A poll is almost always focused on a very specific topic. All the questions are going to have predetermined responses that the person selects. You can select one, two, three, four, or five, right? And it they have to select the one that most closely aligns with their opinion or experience. A survey typically involves a mix of open-ended and closed-ended questions and they help you understand like the current images, the perceptions. It's really trying to find out the connections between what matters or showcasing um, key points of differentiation. You're getting just a little bit of nuance there. Polls are very simplistic. They're just taking the pulse. Surveys are more complex and they're digging for a little more nuance. Now we get into what a focus group is. So focus groups are about qualitative information. They're looking for really in-depth information in a, in a far less structured environment. I mean, you want a good facilitator, but a focus group is where you physically bring in a group of people and the facilitator gets the conversational ball rolling but they are not looking at guiding the conversation quite so much where it goes. You're looking for unfiltered opinions. You want them to feel comfortable expressing how they really feel. This gets you even more nuanced than a survey, but it takes a higher degree of skill in your facilitator to do a focus group. You can test your messaging doing this. Um, you can find out which arguments are more persuadable for certain groups. You can find out why they have a specific reaction that they're having. So that's what a focus group can do. Now one of the big mistakes that people use no matter what method this is, what methods they're using, is to assume that what worked in some other race or some other time or some other area is going to work for you in your race at this time in your area. So it is important to do your research on your messaging and finding out what issues really are even going to, going to work. So let's go to the process. So the process for finding out, first of all, what, what are the key issues? So if you were to do a test knock, you're going to knock on, on the door, just briefly introduce who you are because that's polite, and then you're going to ask them an open-ended question. And please try to have this one be an open-ended question. Don't do at the door as a, as a poll. Don't say this, 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 or this. Keep it open-ended and you're going to ask them, what do you think is the most important issue in your city? What do you think is the most important issue facing our state? What do you think is the most important issue facing our country? Whatever it is, what do you think is the most important issue facing our school district? And then you have to be absolutely silent and wait for them to talk. And they may say, well, you know, I'm concerned about safety. Don't make an assumption that you know what they mean when they say that. Be prepared for a follow-up question. And the follow-up question would be, okay, your concern is safety. Can you give me an example of what your concern is regarding safety? Usually ask for them to give an example 
for them to put it in their own words. What exactly are they concerned about? And you may find out that it is not what you thought it was for safety at all. You may think that they're talking about crime when really what they're talking about is they think the people in their neighborhood are driving so fast that they're going to hit a child soon. Um, that's totally different, right? That's a different, different thing with safety. Or it may be that they feel that the ambulance service in town is so slow that if they have a medical issue, they're going to die. And that's their feeling of safety. So don't assume what, what they're really saying. When you do this test knock, or whether you do this in surveying, because this is also really what you're doing in a test knock is you're doing a survey at the door. You're gonna find out what the top issues are amongst people. And whether you do that through surveying, a test knock, you can do it through polling, but keep in mind in polling, you're going to be limiting the ant possibilities and they may give you an incorrect response. You're going to find out pretty quickly what those issues are. You can go further and you could do a focus group, but I would save your focus group time for when you're coming up with what your solutions are. I would use your polling also for when you're coming up for what your solutions are. Polling is really good for A-B testing. So first thing you're going to do is find out your issues. So whether you did that through your test door knock, which is your least expensive but personally most time intensive way, or you can do it through phone, um, preferably phone, but you can also do text surveying, um, internet surveying, that type of thing. Um, but I would definitely do that in one of those two ways. The next step that you're going to do is you're going to develop what your solutions are. And I would come up with a couple different ways of phrasing your solution. Now you're going to go to either polling or to a focus group. This is where those two areas really shine is for testing your messaging. You can also do it as a test door knock again. So you can go back to that because again, doing a test door knock is really surveying. It's, you know, just a different way. So you can go back and do that. Is it as good? No. Is it going to give you a pretty good idea? Yeah, it will. Again, it's going to be time intensive though. So now you've developed your messaging for that particular solution and you're going to go back to a focus group if you're able to do that and you have your group assembled and maybe you have a mix of people from different political persuasions or maybe you're honing in on a specific group that you're wanting to target with a very specific message and what you want to do is you have your facilitator outline what, what the challenge is or what, what the issue is and then say what the solution is and then it is an open-ended question of how does that make you feel? Not what you think about it. In messaging it's all about how they feel. That's going to elicit more response. If you ask what they think about it, they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, it's okay, or I don't like it, or you know, you're going to get pretty cut or dry answers. When you ask someone, how does that make you feel when you hear that? You're going to elicit a much deeper response. And they may say, ooh, you know, actually I, I feel kind of awful, or mm, you know, I'm kind of getting like a white supremacist vibe, or you know, I mean, they're going to start to give you a lot of feedback on that. And the facilitator there is to keep the conversation going. If you do a poll, what you're going to be doing is it's going to be agree or disagree. They're going to say in one sentence what the challenge is. They're going to respond back with what your solution is and then ask them if they agree or disagree with that. It's very quick. You're going to divide up your people between A group and B group. 
one solution is going to be going out to A group, the other solution is going to be going out to B group. You'll, you should probably get a strong response on one or the other of them, and it may even hinge on just one word difference in your messaging can swing results wildly on this. But that polling is going to get you that information back very quickly. Again though, it is quantitative versus qualitative. So as an example, when um, for your messaging and you're looking at whether you're going to do a specific word or not, I can give you some examples of how it can skew so much your messaging just on changing a word or two. And this can really help you get across to voters your intended message. Okay, so an example was um, in the 2008 presidential election, there was two versions to this question. What one issue matters most to you in deciding how you vote for president? Okay, one was close-ended and the other was open-ended. In the close-ended version, respondents were given five options. More than half of the respondents picked the economy. Only 35% though offered up the economy as a question when it was an open-ended, or as an answer when it was an open-ended question. So you can see the difference in what people really cared about. Otherwise it would look like, oh my god, most everyone cares about the economy and the question and then really the result was no, only 35% had that as a, like a top of mind thing. To give an example and we'll get to like some specific examples of how word choice matters in your messaging. Uh, there was a Pew survey that went out 51% of respondents were favorable to this, making it legal for doctors to give terminally ill patients the mean to end their lives. Okay, so that got a 51% favorability. And this is an issue that some libertarians are running on. That drops to below 40% with this phrasing, making it legal for doctors to assist terminally ill patients in committing suicide. The difference between end of their lives and suicide had a considerable swing in whether people agreed with that or didn't agree with that, whether they were favorable to it or not favorable to it. So again, that is asking the exact same thing. So keep that in mind on how important it is to test your messaging. You should come up with three three issues for you to run on, like three main issues for you to run on. So you're going to do this process, however you do that, with these three different things. Finding out, first of all, with that first one, um, which are those three issues, and then testing the messaging on those three issues. Sometimes you're going to want to use a combination. A combination that's commonly used is a focus group combined with a survey questionnaire. The survey questionnaire is going to get you enough information that you can really dig into the focus group, right? And I'll tell you the important part of a focus group, they're pain in the butt, but why they really help is because you get so much more information from the interaction amongst participants. I mean that's kind of the magic of a focus group is what one person says will spark more conversation. Ideally, the facilitator shouldn't be talking very much. It should be the respondents that are interacting with one another. However, also keep in mind, they can start to influence each other in ways that you won't see out in the wild. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information on how libertarians can do this. And again, the methods that you can use to find out what your top three issues should be for your campaign and then to also test your messaging is you can do a test door knocking, which you can do for free, but it's more time intensive for the candidate themselves. You can do polling, 
which is has a has a little bit of a cost but usually isn't too bad for a cost because again it's usually just like one question cut and dry um, and you can do that online you can do that on the phone um, and that should be a random random sampling you can do surveying which is in more in-depth you do need a higher skill and so you need a higher skill set so that usually does cost a little more um, but it can give you more information that you need to dig a little deeper um, however you can mimic a survey through your through your test knock or a focus group which the cost isn't in getting people together the cost is in getting a good facilitator because a bad facilitator for a focus group will waste everyone's time and they know how to find people who will be willing to join into that that focus group and do that interaction they also know how to read people and understand when people are at the point where they are um, trusting enough to truthfully open up and get that information out there so I do encourage you to try to look at one of these methods um, if you are looking for someone um, to help you with some polling uh, we do have um, uh, Ken Molman who is able to do uh, polling he does it you know primarily robocall and internet and that type of stuff um, Ben Farmer also does uh, polling and surveying as well and I'm going to get that information up into chat I will do that right now so it might look a little funky so for Farmer his information I'll give you his his uh, email so that's Ben at F U S I F O R M L L C dot com there we go so that information is out there and then I will also put it in the comments in the YouTube and also online on how to contact both Ken and Ben if you guys know of anyone else that does work with libertarian candidates and either does focus groups or polling or surveying um, you know sharing is caring so put that information out there and we'll see if anyone else has any questions anything else otherwise we're going to be wrapping it up so I'm going to pause for just a few minutes um, to see if any of you have any questions about messaging testing for what issues are important that matter to voters how to test your messaging um, a B methods of testing anything like that I tried to not to go too way way in depth in any one of these methods just to kind of give you a general idea um, because once you have the information of what's possible then you can start to dig a little deeper on yes I would like to do surveying and I would like to do it for this specific thing and this is how I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna contact this person and you know you can you can go down that rabbit hole so I will pause what are good questions to use for polling so questions for polling um, you need to they need to be either a multiple choice where you're giving them the multiple choice it's not an open-ended question they're closed-ended question um, it is do you agree or disagree with this statement um, it is oh got it got it Joe you missed the first half not a problem um, you can always you know we post these and so you can always rewatch the first half uh, but the questions need to be very tight very concise you need to try to eliminate as much bias as possible in the question um, you know there are people that that's they, they make their career out of coming up with really good polling questions um, but you're just you're looking at a quick snapshot so one question usually very tight very concise close-ended multiple choice or a yes no agree disagree um, that's what you want to keep your polling question to survey questions get to the um, you know multiple choice or it could be an open-ended question or you know it's usually multiple things um, 
they also go into if a person answers this way ask this question if a person answers this way ask this question so that's that's how that gets into that if there are any other questions you can always contact me um, and get a hold of me you can find me on Facebook you can um, get a hold of me on email I have my contact information on Twitch I have it on email uh, or on uh, Facebook I also have it on lp.org you can you can find me in the staff and be able to contact me uh, you can always ask me any questions and I will assist you on that so I'm gonna wrap it up for this evening thank you all very very much for listening in again this will be posted on twitch and also it will be um, archived up on YouTube as well and Joe says I was thinking do you plan on voting in the state representative race do you plan on voting for a representative Democrat or a libertarian candidate absolutely yep yep you want to keep them really tight 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 and that works so yes Joe you are coming up with your good questions for polling so thank you all very much and I hope you have a wonderful evening <music>